There was a realization I had with the Cybertruck recently, which is that of the announced and like confirmed electric pickup trucks out there, it sounds like it's kind of going to be the last one. I mean, I'm sure Chevy Silverado is going to come around lately and there's probably going to be a Dodge Ram electric pickup truck later. But in the meantime, like the Rivian R1T deliveries have technically started. The F-150 Lightning is already entering pre-production and Ford is doubling up the production capacity on that trim alone because so many people seem to be ordering it. The electric Hummer deliveries are supposed to be later this year, and if not, they'll probably be still before the Cybertruck delivers, because I believe in the leak of the Elon Musk meeting that was all hands-on and them saying that Cybertruck production probably isn't going to start until late 2022, meaning that deliveries might not even be until early 2023, and yet despite all of this, I'm not really that worried. I'm actually pretty confident that the Cybertruck, despite being last and despite being so delayed, is just going to completely dominate and destroy every other electric pickup truck that comes out on the market. And it's still hilarious to me that despite the insane demand, the insane specifications, the great range, the weight savings, the extreme durability of this truck, there's still people out there like Jim Cramer that are so out of touch, so out of the loop to say things like, I think the Cybertruck's gonna be Tesla's biggest flop yet because it looks so weird and that was literally his only logic was because it looks ugly that means it must not sell very well and it's gonna be a flop i don't think someone could be more detached from reality if you just exactly know why the cybertruck looks the way it does and the fact that despite all of these other electric pickup trucks whether it's the hummer f-150 lightning lordstown the rivian no matter who you are you cannot beat the specifications that tesla put forward with the cybertruck and sure due to inflation alone the actual prices when the truck comes out might end up being higher and no just because you got your reservation in doesn't mean you have to lock in that price of the truck other than FSD. I'm here to tell you that even if the Cybertruck ends up costing $10,000 more than Tesla anticipated across the board for every trim it's still going to be unbeatable in just regards to payload capacity the fact that you have a extremely durable exoskeleton that is technically bulletproof Tesla armored glass and no paint job to worry about adaptive air suspension rear rear steering, an air compressor, and electrical outlets you can tap into, up to six seats. Plus, of course, this is going to have access to the supercharging network, and I do genuinely believe that while we don't know the exact weight of the Cybertruck, the structural pack with the 4680s is going to allow for an incredible amount of energy density in a weight that is surprisingly low that no other EV pickup truck on the market is going to be able to beat. So the interior and the exterior, yeah, I can agree, aren't going to be for everyone, and there's going to be people like Jim or diehard Ford fans or maybe just a lot of people out there that are buying the F-150 Lightning or the Rivian just because they need an electric pickup truck now and they need it before they buy anything else and they just have time against them. They need to buy a truck as quickly as possible. I think that's fine and there's going to be plenty of trucks hopefully available for everyone to choose from and I'm glad competition is a thing but my prediction is that a lot of electric pickup truck buyers whether you're buying the Hummer, whether you're buying the Lightning or the R1 T are going to feel a lot of buyer's remorse when the Cybertruck comes out and starts getting EPA estimated ranges over 500 miles on a truck that's under $80,000 with a higher payload capacity, higher towing capacity, and access to likely faster charging rates than any of these trucks have available to them. We know the Cybertruck's going to charge over 250 kilowatts, whereas the R1T and the F-150 Lightning appear to just kind of cap out at 150 kilowatts, which means that all of the money you're spending, whether it's the Hummer, or the F-150 Lightning or the R1T, they're going to be great for your weekend warrior usage, but you're going to be really envious of once the Cybertruck deliveries do begin and you start seeing extremely fast charging rates and access to an expansive charging network that's going to make for a much better time on road trips because you're not relying on the slower and less reliable Ford Charge Pass network and because the battery packs across all of these vehicles is going to be huge and they're not going to be extremely efficient, plus you're you're going to be capped out at 150 kilowatts, you're going to find yourself having to stop at a lot of charge stations for 30, 40, 50 minutes in order to get enough range back to keep driving. Whereas the Cybertruck, I think, will charge much faster. It's going to age far, far better because every scratch or every scuff that that exoskeleton collects is really just going to add to the aesthetic even more and lean into the apocalyptic vehicle it is. And anytime you'll have spent 50 or $70,000 on your electric pickup truck and you have to deal with glass headline fractures or dents and scratches in the paint that are going to stand out and make you go, well, uh, 
uh, you know, I guess it's a used, you know, lived-in truck. Those are gonna be the moments where you think to yourself, man, I guess the Cybertruck wouldn't have had this problem. And still, despite all of these vehicles getting closer to production and closer to deliveries, it's mind-boggling to me that no one else has been able to catch up with Tesla in regard to their functionality, their utilities, and just the raw specifications that the Cybertruck is able to deliver on. Whether it's 0-60 to 60 time, total range, payload capacity, you know, the size of the bed, and the overall cargo space and protection that vault is going to allow for, plus the storage wings on the side I could see being extremely useful if people are complaining about wanting to reach over the bed and grab tools on the inside. No, you just put them in those little side wings and they'll probably be even more accessible than trying to haul them out of a bed. So as time goes on and the Cybertruck deliveries do begin and it starts becoming more and more obvious how nothing else can beat it, I think it will become abundantly clear to a lot of other automakers out there, especially ones that are trying to convert to electric, that the Cybertruck had to look the way it did. And as much as you may have mocked it, as much as you all may have hated the Cybertruck design or said, oh my god, it looks ugly, you'll start to realize very quickly that everybody else is going to have to copy what Tesla is doing with the Cybertruck in order to match or beat those specifications, especially on price and on energy efficiency. Let me know how you guys feel about the Cybertruck being last and how that is kind of an okay thing because they're basically gonna blow everybody out of the water. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.